So my name is Daniela Hueso, and I'm here to present my capstone project on planning and conducting participatory community consultations for the National Life Fish Management Strategy of Belize. So just to get things started, this is a basic overview of what we'll be going over today. I'll give you some basic content on Belize, um, talk about the organization that I've worked with, uh, some background on Lion Fish, talk over the community consultations, go over the results, and talk about some secondary projects. So, Belize is located in northern Central America, bordered by Mexico, Guatemala, and the Caribbean Sea. It has a population of about 377,000 people. Just to give you some perspective, it's a little bit smaller than the state of Massachusetts. It's relatively small. Um, it has six, six districts here, color coordinated here for the in the map. Um, but even though it's a small country, it's a very diverse country. It has many ethnic groups, including Mayan, Garifunas, uh, there's Mennonites, there's Asians, there's Creole, so it's a very, very diverse country. Um, the primary language is English, however, they also speak Spanish in the northern parts, um, as well as some Mayan dialects, um, German for those Mennonites communities, and Creole. And they gained their independence in September 21st, 1981. It's a relatively young country, it's 36 years old. Um, it was first settled by, by the Mayans, and then uh, the British came in for timber harvesting in the 16th and 17th centuries, and they granted the lease their independence. So to go over some of protected areas in Belize, this is a map of all the protected areas, uh, which consists of 108 sites within the National Protected Areas System. 37% um, of these are terrestrial and 20% are marine. Now this is a map of the marine protected area um, network, which consists of 14 distinct areas. It has nine marine protected areas here in marine reserves in blue, two wildlife sanctuaries, two national parks, two natural monuments, and these are all within uh, the management of the Belize Fisheries Department, um, but four of these are also co-managed with other organizations uh, in Belize. So the whole movement of MPAs really started in the 1980s with the designation of the first Natural Monument, which is a Half Moon Cave Natural Monument, right there, up. Um, and then followed the Fisheries Amendment Act in 1983, and in 1987 was the first marine reserve, um, Hold Chan, which is up here at the top by the community of San Pedro. So out of this 20% of marine protected areas, 2.7% are actually non-extractive. Um, and they're divided in three different zones. You have the conservation zones, which are absolutely protected. Um, we have no-take zones, which only recreational uh, activities can be implemented. And you have general use zones, which are for those fishermen who want to do local fishing and selling. They also have to have a valid um, fishing license and proper gear. So, um, I don't know if you guys knew, but the lease has the second largest barrier reef in the world. Uh, it measures about 220 kilometers, which is crazy because it covers almost the entire country. Um, and also, um, they have a unique um, settlement in 1996. Seven of these marine protected areas uh, went under the Belize Barrier Reef System um, World Heritage Site. So it's a very, very unique ecosystem. It has seagrass beds, mangrove forests, coral reefs, many threatened species, and it's all interconnected. So the majority of people who also visit Belize go to see this beautiful reef. So I had the great pleasure to work or be a part of this organization called Blue Ventures. Um, they're based in the UK, um, but they work in Madagascar, Timor-Leste, and Belize. Um, and these are their seven core values, like what they follow by heart. Um, it was really neat to see everything that they did in the organization was following these seven um, values. So Belize established in 2010 in this beautiful community of Sartaneja, based in the Corozal district, which is up north. Um, and this community is absolutely gorgeous, and it's the largest fishing community in Belize, also known for the tradition of boat making, which you can see there at the back, made out of wood. Um, and 80% of the households depend on fishing as a primary source of income. So Blue Ventures obviously landed site here. Now the two main focuses for Blue Ventures, um, split up in two, they do expeditions. Um, they're actually located in Bacalar Chico Marine Reserve, which is one of the seven marine protected areas, fallen into the UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
Um, and what they do is they collect scientific data with the help of volunteers from all over the world, and they investigate the impact of lionfish on the reef. And these, all of these funds help create a community conservation, which splits up into two, two themes. One is community, which focuses on education and outreach, and obviously lionfish, working on the strategy and research. Be Lioness, which is the women's group who does lionfish jewelry, and also focusing on social marketing and outreach. So we're going to be talking today about lionfish. Now, this is just a map to show you the the blue and the green is the native range of lionfish. The red areas here are the non-native range of lionfish. And the dashed areas here are the potential um, range that they could reach um, in a few years. They also recently discovered some in the, in the Mediterranean Sea. So it all started in the 80s, where there was a few sightings in, the, in, my, in Florida. And in 1992, a few releases through the aquarium trade um, really started this invasion. Um, and starting in the early uh, 2000s, you can see they're going to Bermuda, northern parts of the states. By 2004, they're reaching the Bahamas and creating this domino effect um, all over the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic. So this, this, is, a, this is the most updated map, um, animated map by USGS, um, all the way to 2017. So you can see through this map that the unfortunately getting rid of lionfish is virtually impossible. <laughs> However, there are many management strategies that can help suppress um, lionfish densities in these different areas. So why are they so successful? Um, lionfish tend to live in many different habitats, including mangroves, um, seagrass beds, coral reefs, and any man-made structure. Uh, they have really, really high reproductive rates. They can produce up to 2 million eggs in a year. Um, they have really high consumption rates, which is having a negative effect on native species. Um, they have no top predators, and they have venomous plants. So this guy is a perfect invader. <clears throat> now, the first sighting in Belize was in 2008 in this turn of atoll, which falls into one of the marine protected areas. And again, this raised big concerns for Belize. Um, and given the fact that there's already a lot of overfishing and runoff, um, this was a huge concern for the native species and local livelihoods of fishing communities. So. Some current efforts that are happening in Belize. Um, there have been a lot of organizations, institutions, tour operators, and fishermen who are helping to mitigate this invasion by various acts. Um, and in 2009, the um, uh, Belize Fisheries Department, along with other cons conservation stakeholders, joined forces in developing the first national lionfish management strategy. Um, and it goes over the history of lionfish, the range, what are some mitigations that are going on, and what are some future suggestions be used. So currently, uh, Blue Ventures is working on updating this new management strategy that will go between 2016 to 2020. And in 2015, they met up, started having meetings, organizing um, how they could better improve uh, this strategy. And in 2016, they set the vision, the mission, and the goals. So you can see here that they really want to focus on adaptively managing lionfish in a participatory manner, including more people and communities. Uh, they want to use a social um, ecological approach and adaptive management that considers social, ecological, and economic outcomes, and focusing on these three main goals, participatory and adaptive, keep lionfish populations at a low level that doesn't affect native species, and recommended actions that consider direct and indirect outcomes. When I first heard about the strategy, it was a very big document. <laughs> and um, Blue Ventures wanted to, to do this by conducting participatory community consultations in six different fishing communities, or coastal communities, excuse me. And the two main objectives was we really wanted to inform all of these stakeholders the best way possible, um, given all the information that we can about the slime fish invasion. And we wanted to achieve the active participation of these specific stakeholders that we picked. Um, these are people usually who are working hardcore on lionfish management. And um, Police Fisheries Department was one of our partners who helped us with these consultations. So I just want to give them a big thank you for that. And so the planning process for this really took about two months before me taking an amazing trip to Belize. Um, we conducted meetings, trying to select these stakeholders, select these communities, prepare some documents uh, which had 
the agenda, the format, some of the uh, description for stakeholders, basically explaining what the consultation would be like, um, preparing flyers for each community, and then this allowed me to also create a contact list through the help of the fisheries department, which gave me names and phone numbers of people that I could go to in these communities and directly talk to, because I had no idea who I was going to be reaching. So this took me to six communities. Uh, Saltaneja, which is the fishing community where Blue Ventures is, San Pedro, Peacocker, Langriga, Placencia, and Belize. Um, and again, if it wasn't for this contact list, I don't know what, what I would have done, but I traveled for two and a half weeks, um, meeting people, uh, talking to key stakeholders, organizing venues, logistics, getting chefs and fishermen to give me lionfish to prepare lionfish tasters, um, and basically just planning all the logistics. Um, and it all ran really smoothly, thankfully. And then this took me to do also a pilot um, simulation consultation in Bacalar Chico, which is the dive camp where the expeditions team is. is. Um, and we conducted this with the volunteers who are currently there, and they gave us amazing feedback on the consultation and facilitation skills as well. So that's how the planning process went about. And so the format that we created was based on this World Cafe style. Um, we wanted to make it as inclusive and participatory as possible. So we broke it down into these, um, starting with the introduction by Belize Fisheries Department representative Vanessa Figueroa, who's actually this one, sitting down, not the one standing, uh, followed by an icebreaker so people get to know each other. The presentation, which was given by the Blue Venture staff, giving social and ecological information on live fish, followed by the main activity, which is the are the scenarios, and I'll go over those in a minute. They had discussions, evaluation, they voted on their favorite scenario, and then they had a raffle and conclusion. So I'll go over some of the presentation material that we went through together with the participants so you guys get a sense of what we talked about, but also explain the main activity and how we got there. So the main activity was the scenarios, and we based these off of social and ecological research that had been done by Blue Ventures between the years of 2015 and 2016. These are the five um, studies that I'm going to go over with you, as well as touching base on a social ecological framework that was designed and a lionfish population dynamics model, which I'll explain also. So in 2014, um, there was a big study in the Bahamas by some scientists who basically were trying to figure out, they designed this ecological threshold model, which basically said if lionfish densities exceed this threshold, they're going to have a negative impact on native species. If lionfish population densities are below this threshold, the native species could survive, or could have a better chance. And so Blue Ventures wanted to trial this method, and they did so in studying uh, five marine protected areas that you see here, Bacalar Chico, Holchan, Hecocker, Southwater Key, and Port Honduras. And they're also divided into general use zone and no-take zone. So reminder, general use is only for fishermen, and no-take zones are no fishing allowed, just recreation. So what they found was that live fish densities are quite different in each of these MPAs. But most importantly, what they found was the big difference between general use zone and no-take zone. So if you look at Bacalar Chico, where uh, Blue Ventures is located, as well as fisheries, they usually maintain both general use zone and no-take zones equally, because you have fishermen actively catching live fish, as well as uh, blue ventures and fisheries, so those are maintained um, quite well. Uh, Hold Tan and Kikokker, there's a lot of fishermen down there. There's usually a lot of tourism in those areas. So they're taking care of the general use zone, and you can see that the no-take the no zones are also low due to the fact that there's two operators being able to enter these areas. They're the only ones who can enter no-take zones. And if you look at South Water Key, general use zone is maintained pretty low, but no-take zone is really, really high. Um, there is rarely any uh, tour operators managing this marine protected area, so live fish densities are going off the roof. So when this was presented to fisheries, they had a huge concern because no-take zones are supposed to be replenishment zones for these native species that have spillover effects. Um, and usually, going down the line can affect fishermen and local livelihoods. So they were really keen on having some sort of better recommendations for no-take zones within the next strategy. So they also took a look at fishermen. They wanted to see what do they know about lionfish? Are they catching lionfish? 
And they uh, had surveys in three of the northernmost communities in Belize, Sartareja, Chunux, and Harbor Bank. And they found out that 77% of fishermen in Sartaneja are catching and selling live fish. And 20% of the north other communities were buying and selling live fish. As well, they were catching lion fish for their own subsistence. So they were bringing lion fish home to eat, which was very good. However, the biggest barrier for fishermen is the lack of a market. There is no place for fishermen to drop their catch and sell lion fish. So that was the biggest barrier that, we, that they found. Then restaurants, they wanted to know how many restaurants in Belize are actually selling lion fish. Um, they surveyed about 250 restaurants in 10 different areas around Belize. And they found out that only 9% of restaurants sell lionfish. And their two main reasons is it's good for the reef and um, it's a good quality fish. The other 91% said, we don't know where to access it and we don't know if consumers will eat it. Because there's this misconception that lionfish is venomous and it will be dangerous to eat. So that's one of the biggest um, barriers. Then um, Julie Sabatis, a previous seal tailor, did this study um, around Belize. She wanted to know what consumers were thinking or what if they were consuming lionfish. So she traveled over around Belize as well in all six districts, you can see here. And what, what they basically found out was that 75% of participants who were surveyed had heard about lionfish but had not tried it, and 15% had actually tried it. Um, so they, through this study, they found out that there needed to be more of a social marketing campaign initiative to make people understand what lionfish really is, that it's safe to eat, and that you're helping the reef. And finally, um, to our operators and tournaments. Now, this was not an official study. We did this through personal communication and online and talking to different tour operators. We found out that 15, 15 tour operators in Belize are currently doing lionfish activities. Now, this is related to lionfish culling, which is spearing lionfish and putting it in a safe device so you don't get stung. And there's currently two tournaments a year in Belize. Now, tournaments are like competitions, one day competition when you go out and catch as many lionfish as you can, you bring them back, you get a prize. So, what we wanted to do is we wanted to put all of this information together in the best and most digestible way uh, because of the, the fact that we had such a broad audience. And so, what we did is we had an amazing local artist called Jesus, aka Chewy. Um, designed these amazing scenario drawings for us and put all of this information together into these scenario drawings. And this is what we presented to the participants. And so I'm going to run them with you together so you understand them and then we're going to go over this, those results. So scenario number one is present day, what is currently happening in Belize with live fish management. So, they were blurry, sorry. There's also a few, these are drawings and you want to see them more closely. Um, this is scenario one, present day. You can see here the bottom, of, this is the reef and mainland. Um, you see lionfish densities and sizes are quite big. <laughs> They're having an effect on juvenile species as well as, as, well as commercial uh, species such as snapper, grouper, and lobster. You see divers here doing their lionfish calls, lionfish activities. You have a little bit of awareness by tourists talking about next year's tournament. They're very excited. Uh, you have one out of ten restaurants selling live fish, comes back to that 9%. You have a lionfish jeweler right here in the middle, selling her lionfish jewelry. She buys her fins from the fishermen and makes her earrings. And you also have uh, fishermen eating lionfish for their own subsistence, those, um, a percentage of fishermen who bring it home. So this is present day Belize. Now, the second scenario, uh, Blue Ventures and Noah and a team of um, collaborators helped to design this lionfish population model. Basically, figuring out what would be the, the growth rates, mortality rates, and density rates of lionfish in the long term, and how would these will affect the human systems associated with lionfish management. They also implemented the social ecological framework, which Jen was there to also help, uh, which basically is the interaction with social and ecological systems, and what are the cons, cons and pros. So, Based on this model, we said, what would happen if we continue what we're doing by the year 2020? What would this look like? So you see here, lionfish uh, densities and sizes are increasing steadily. They're increasing. Still having an effect on juvenile species as well as commercial species. You see other fishermen struggling to find a snapper. Um, tour operators are doing their thing. 
uh, uh, tourists still talking about the tournament, so there's a little bit of awareness going on. You have the one out of 10 restaurants selling lamb fish. However, you have another restaurant there saying, I want to sell it, I just don't know where to get it. So that barrier between supply and demand is still not being met. Lionfish jeweler upgraded her house. She's doing really well. Uh -huh. And you still see fishermen eating more subsistence. So this is what will happen if we continue doing what we're doing. However, we know that this is not enough. And this is going to have the most negative effects on the reef and the local fishermen. So we wanted to introduce these three uh, management strategies. And this is the chance where fishermen, or sorry, uh, participants got the chance to give us feedback. So we presented them with the three management interventions and they had 10 minute discussions giving their feedback and their opinions. So the first one was the lionfish facility. We said, okay, what would happen if the lionfish facility is implemented in Belize? Lionfish facility is basically a cooperative or a place where you can go and sell your catch specifically for lionfish. So you can see the facility up there on the top, right hand corner. And now directly off the bat, you can see that this implementation of the facility can help fishermen have a place to go, take their fish, sell it, also providing opportunities for exporting, as well as restaurants having access to supply. Um, you see here on the reef, densities are still increasing, not as much as business as usual because of this facility. Uh, tour operators still doing their thing, restaurant owners selling, and now you see a second restaurant selling lime fish because now he has access to more supply. So it goes up to 20 to 30 percent of those uh, restaurants selling lime fish. Lionfish jeweler, still very happy. And yeah, you see fishermen just doing their thing. So we asked them, what are pros and cons of this scenario? Please give us your feedback. Now the next management um, intervention was, what would happen if instead of having 15 tour operators and duck line fish operations, what if we have 30? What would this look like? So you see here, second implementation of a tour operator um, on the reef. Same, same stuff, you see lionfish going up, however, not as much as business uh, as usual. You see them displacing lobsters, still having an effect on snappers and groupers and juvenile species. Uh, tour operators are still calling and doing their activities and increasing more with the second one, and also a little bit more awareness by the public. Um, you have restaurant owners still selling, but you're still not meeting that uh, gap between supply and demand and lionfish fisher is still doing well, and you also see uh, fishermen for eating for subsistence. But very, a lot fewer than uh, business as usual as well. So the final management intervention was, what if you had, instead of two tournaments, you had four a year? Now you see here in the center, the implementation of a tournament going on. Uh, however, if you look at the reef, there's a lot more live fish here. Um, affecting, again, grouper, snapper, and lobsters, displacing them from their reef, uh, having effect on juvenile species. Um, tournaments are extremely important in creating awareness. The first people who ever tried or hear about live fish is through a tournament. Um, so it's really, really important in that aspect. However, if you look at the reef, it's not very sustainable in the long run. You still have the, the restaurant selling, but you're still not meeting that the gap between supply and demand, and you have less subsistence by fishers. Um, so, again, this is a very good awareness raising uh, scenario. So, after all of these interventions were presented, um, participants had an opportunity to speak up. And so we divided them up into small groups. Each table had a facilitator with a note taker. And they had a five minute debrief where they would share with us the entire group um, on their results and their thoughts. So what we did is in, uh, with Blue Ventures, we conducted these SWOT analysis for each of these uh, management interventions. So it was six communities, three management interventions, that's 18 total SWOT analysis, to look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And this is one example from Sarpaneja. Um, just highlighted a few points here. It will be a set location if you have a facility uh, with a set price and a set buyer. However, some of the weaknesses, no gain to cover costs or no set buyer. Threats may be an unreliable market, and an opportunity could be more international market, exchange, exports, as well as you can go through cooperatives, which are already existent in Belize. So that's just to give you a, a brief example of one. And something that I really enjoyed was we gave them a, an opportunity to say, okay, we, we introduced these three management interventions. Do you guys have any other ideas of how we can work this out? And so they gave us a bunch of um, alternative scenarios, suggested scenarios, and we categorized them into 21 categories. 
So this is one example um, where they were saying that they wanted fisheries department to allow fishers to cull, to hunt lionfish inside the no-take zones, or have seasonal openings in these no-take zones to control lionfish during the closed lobster season. So this could be a year supply. Um, their justifications were the reasons why they thought this was important. And then after these were presented, were presented to us, Blue Ventures took this to police fisheries department, and then they were the ones that said, okay, this scenario is feasible or not. We can actually do this. So now what's happening is all of these scenarios will be put together in strategy, and they will be presented to fisheries, and then fisheries say, if it's feasible, we can go ahead and adopt it, implement it and adopt it. It's very good news. Um, from, nine, from all six communities, we had a total of 98 participants, and these are their votes on their favorite management interventions. So you have, number one, the facility, followed by the tourism, then tournaments, and access to no-take zones, as well as other suggested uh, scenarios. Those who were void uh, were either people who voted for more than one scenario, or scenarios that weren't on the list. And something very interesting from these pooled votes, you can see that every community had a very different perspective. Uh, none of these are homogenous. And so you can see that, for example, Sapaneha, which is the biggest fishing community, we had a lot of fishermen attend. They mostly wanted a facility and access to no-take zones, obviously. When compared to Kikakur, which is a very touristy destination, they said, we want more tournaments, but we also want a facility. So it's just it was very interesting to see the different perspectives from all of these participants. It was very helpful. We also received some good feedback. Thanks for the picture, Jen. Um, <laughs> we gave them evaluation forms where they gave us feedback on the facilitation, on their information. They got to vote on these evaluation forms. And overall, they felt very comfortable and included um, in the consultation, which was our goal. So we were very happy about that. And learned a lot of things. Uh, what worked mostly for me was working together as a team. I couldn't have done it without Blue Ventures, without Belize Fisheries Department. Help from the local people. Oh my goodness. I had an instance where I had no idea how to speak Creole. And I had one to a fisherman and they were like, who are you? <laughs> so I, I received so much help from local people, uh, NGOs, fishermen associations, local governments. It was very, very useful for me. Being prepared, number one. Um, also announcing flyers and reminders on social media to attract a bigger audience. Lionfish tasters were a hit. It was actually a few people who were there were actually trying it for the first time, so it was really exciting. Uh, having meetings after each consultation with our team was very, very important. We talked about what went wrong and what we can improve on. Being flexible, adaptive, and open-minded throughout this whole process. Some of those challenges, scheduled time, we scheduled from 6 to 8 p.m., which is not a lot of people like those hours, especially after you have a long day of work. Some of the locations were not accessible to some of the participants. Uh, the timing also went over a little bit because people usually show up a little bit later and we started a little bit later, went over time. And we had a lack of promotions such as radio or TV. So those were some of our challenges, but we realized them and we tried to improve on them. So outcomes. Overall, we had a very good attendance for all communities. They felt comfortable and included, which was very important. Uh, it improved us to help us with our facilitation skills. And again, we got that feedback and recommendations that we so desperately needed for this strategy. So this will all hopefully match the vision, mission, and goals of the upcoming strategy, as well as being included um, into the strategy so that people can see what participants had to say. And then the final product would be a technical report going through each consultation, um, all the SWOTS analysis, and everything will be given back to NGOs as well as the communities and other stakeholders who are interested. So I also had a great time doing secondary projects. Um, the BLINS Women's Group is the jewelry group. Um, they're an amazing group of women, uh, very admirable. Uh, I had a chance to do knowledge exchange workshops, IT workshops, help them with some of their Facebook page postings, uh, as well as working with children. Uh, the program officer was amazing. She did a lot of great work. We had a lot of educational booths, which again helps a lot um, during Lobster Fest and Fisher's Fairs, which was really fun. And I helped design some marketing materials for some other events. We had a live fish dinner in the City, and it was very successful. So those are some of the secondary projects that I worked on. And for me, I think 
going to Belize, number one, such a beautiful country. But um, being so immersed into this NGO really opened my eyes to the professional life and what I wanted to do. Um, and the team was amazing and they opened their doors and hearts. And I got to travel around Belize, seeing all these different communities and meeting all these amazing people. So for me, I that's what made me decide what I wanted for my future. Um, and me personally, I, I loved traveling and getting to know all these amazing people. But again, I couldn't have done any of these without everyone who was involved. Um, thank you to my advisors, Jen, um, Rebecca, and Maria, my committee members. Um, the Blue Ventures team, both on the community conservation side and the expedition side, as well as the community officers. Community officers are young, um, young kids from the community of Sartanejo who help Blue Ventures conduct specific projects, so it's really neat to have them there. Um, I want to shout out some names. Jen, Cecilia, Tyrell, Vanessa from Fisheries. This is Byron, one of our community officers. Uh, Darling, Romendo, Ineri, uh, the expeditions team for having patience with me in the pilot consultation. Henry, Davide, and Hugo, all the boat captains um, and watchmen, as well as Belize Fisheries Department. They really gave me a lot of information. Um, they provided a lot of help. Community stakeholders, like I mentioned, couldn't have done it with those local partners and friends and family for love and support throughout this whole process. With that, 